this is what happened, the strange thing that happened. instead of the low road. Uh, would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, good. More for me. I thought you said you were going to cut down on that stuff. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, but I'm a terrible liar. Besides, it doesn't pay. You know, once I was going with a wonderful girl, and she used to plead with me and plead with me to give it up. So one day I did. But then we discovered we had nothing more to talk about, so we broke up. There's something about this forest that gives me the feeling like being stuck in a cathedral. Uh, if it were, I'd know where the exit was. <laughs> you don't believe in anything, do you? Oh, of course I do. <laughs> like what? Well, practically anything I can understand. Uh, you know, things that are real to me, like things I can touch, taste, hear, see, smell, and uh, swallow. And what about the things you don't understand? Why well, I dismiss them. <laughs> and that makes everything very easy for you, doesn't it? Comfortable is the word. Oh, I envy you, Jeff. Why? Well, you seem so very satisfied. Oh, I am. Aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. You've got a fine job, a fine... Uh, you've got a, you're engaged to a fine girl, and you're lost in a fine forest. What more could you want? <laughs> I don't know. But something seems wrong, especially about me and Jane. And that makes everything else seem wrong. Look how I postponed getting married. I just can't get myself to that altar. Oh, I don't know what could be wrong about it. She's young and attractive and could smack into your niche in life. And she loves you. Just the proper amount, too. Oh, but what is the proper amount, Jeff? Enough to make you happy, and not enough to embarrass your friends. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, do you hear that? Uh-huh. Look over there. Oh, it looks like a village. I think it is. But I thought you said there were no villages marked on the map around here. I did. Well, see where that village is? There's a peculiar mist all around it. There's none here in the valley. Only around that village. Let's walk up to it. It can't be very far from here. Wait, Jeff! I'm going down the valley. It looks safer. <laughs> Wait till Cook's tours hear about this. Butter there at 
the square that E. I'm selling there at the square laddie. Mr. Murdoch has written 
upon this parchment a few reminders. He has asked me to hang it to the public square. We can all see it and be reminded. This is the second day of our blessing. And this is to remind you of the obligations we have so gratefully accepted. I am the good one. And so I shall hang it in the square as I told Mr. Murdoch I would. <laughs> Your father sure likes to take charge of things, doesn't he, Fiona? Aye, especially after everything been done. Uh, now, would you have a waistcoat of this that might fit in? I think so, Fiona. Hello, Harry. Hello, Jane. How are you today? How do you expect me to be? It is your wedding day, isn't it? Oh, Harry, I'm truly sorry. Well, there's no need. If anybody's gonna pity me, let it be me. Trapped forever without you in this yokel's village. Oh, uh, hello, Harry. Oh, hello, Fiona. It just isn't fair for Charlie Cameron to be wedding you. He got everything. University of Edinburgh, now you. And I've got nothing. Harry, Harry, here. Take this cloth back to the house. See if you can make a waistcoat of it there. Ah, uh, nothing but to be doing this my whole life. Hey. And why do you pay no attention to Maggie Abernathy? You know she has a yarn and Aye, right, Father. Oh, Fiona, I feel so sorry for him. I know, darling. Oh, oh, Mr. Ritchie, you didn't hate me for not loving Hattie, do you? No, Jean, it's not your fault. I sometimes think the only woman who could have loved Hattie was his mother. Rest her soul. <laughs> Come now, Jean. You all be staying with your father today. Oh, Fiona, you'll be sure to buy everything that's needed for the wedding supper. I will, Father. Remember, just what's needed. My intention is to be hospitable, not philanthropic. Uh, Mr. Ritchie, you send the waistcoat to the house? Aye, Fiona. Good morning, Fiona. Oh, hello, Nick. A jug of cream, please. Mr. McMoney's would be pleased as the last buying for the change. <coughs> Why? When the lads come shopping, they look so broke. I didn't like to ask him for money. But she'll never make a profit doing that. No, but I'll make a lot of friends. Hey! Okay. Is this for the wedding tonight? Aye. When are you going to think of marriage for yourself? When I find someone who makes me think of it. And you've never found anyone up till now who makes you think of it? No. You see, I didn't want to just get married. I think you should do it when ye and your lad want to stay together fiercely. And getting married is the only way you can do it that's respectable. That's a queer notion, Fiona. Many a lassie, as everyone knows, will try to be married before 25. So she'll agree to most any proposal. All he must be is a man and alive. I hold a dream and there's no compromising. I know there's one certain body for me. One day he'll come walking on the horizon. But should he not, then an old maid of 
you, old man, uh, could you tell us where we are? Of course I can tell you. You're in Brigadoon. Uh, Brigadoon? <laughs> I... That's funny. There's no Brigadoon on the map. Uh, I shouldn't be surprised. You mean, you know it isn't on the map. I mean, isn't that a little inconsiderate of you? Why is it on the map? For good and soon reasons. Uh, you over here, uh, what are you all dressed up for? Uh, oh, is today the day you take pictures of postcards? We're not dressed up. You mean you always walk around with these clothes on? No. <laughs> now, come on. What's going on here? What is this all? We're having a fair. Oh. Oh, is that milk you're selling? I it is. Okay. Uh, can I buy some? I'm really thirsty. We've been walking all night. <laughs> I'll have to see your money first. What? What, the... huh. uh, what did you give him? <laughs> a nugget of gold? Just a shilling. What a loony layout this is. Aye, it is very interesting, sir. But it is of no use to me. What do you mean it's of no use to you? Sell me something and it will be. I'm sorry, but I can't sell you anything. However, if you're thirsty, I'll buy you a drink. Oh, never mind, I don't want any favor. I see from your coin you're from England. No, we're Americans. You're Americans? I am. He's from Brooklyn. Now, come on, let's go. Uh, no, wait! Please! Uh, we didn't mean to behave so strangely. We are just a wee bit taken aback. People didn't come around here very often. Well, I can see why. These people stare at us as if we dropped in from another world. <laughs> Does that amuse you? Aye, very much. Aye, it's me. <laughs> They say every village has one. <laughs> well, if you've been walking all night, you must be tired and hungry. Would you not know, like something to eat and perhaps a place to lie down before you start back? Yeah, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Good. Oh, my name is Fiona McKee. I'm Tommy Albright, and this is Jeff Douglas. How do you do, sir? And I'm ah! Rocky! Oh, 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 I'm glad you're happy about it. Uh, look. There's a way in around the corner where we can get some food. I'll take you to it. <laughs> Run along. I'll be there in a minute. I want to phone the hotel first. So, is Meg going to be taking care of you, sir? Uh, I'm afraid so. Uh, why? Well, I got a pair of woolens and tartans here. And if Meg is going to be taking you to the inn, and you happen to rip your own on a, uh, a thistle. I'd be more than happy to replace them for you. Uh, thanks, old man, but I don't intend on getting stuck. You did a kid of honor, but you're stuck there! <laughs> oh. <laughs> you tend to your son, Mr. Ritchie! Uh, 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 uh. What a place. Is there a phone around here? A uh, phone? Uh, yeah. I don't think we have one. No phone. <laughs> no, sir. Well, the merry bridegroom himself. Bridegroom? Aye. Good morning to you, darling. <laughs> He's marrying my sister this evening. Well, good son. Uh, thanks, you too. Uh, Charlie, this is Tommy Albright. He was just wondering why a wee while ago. Why, of course. Welcome to you. <laughs> um, thanks. Here's your drink, Charlie. Hot youngest. How about you, sir? Some claret? Um, sure, thanks. I think I'll drink this one to Mr. Forsyth. I just hope he knows how grateful I am to him for postponing the miracle for me. And may God bless me this evening, as much as I would bless him, if I were he and he were Charlie Cameron! <laughs> what did you say about postponing the miracle? Uh, drink it down. I'll explain to you later. Wow, that's wonderful. Can I have another? <laughs> Tis a wedding gesture, sir. From now on, tis for sale only. Uh, thanks, anyway. Oh, I must buy some planets for the supper. Come with me and you can have some more. Sure. Woolens! Tartans! Oi, Charlie. He's an old lad, young. Aye, he has a queer-like way of speaking. I wonder what American women are like. I 
I mustn't wonder about woman any more, Angus. I'm not allowed to. Well, that's right, Charlie. You're finished with the lassies for good, ain't ya? I used to be a roving lad, a roving and wandering life I had. On any last I throw, who would try to tie me down? But then one day I saw a maid, she held out her hand and I stayed and stayed. And now across the green, I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. I used to have a hundred friends. When we are wedded, the friendship ends. They never come to call. So farewell to one and all. Farewell to all the lads I knew. I'll see them again when they're married too. For now across the green, I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. In Edinburgh, I used to know a lass with an air in her name. And every night at ten, I would meet her in the glen. But now I'll not see her again, especially not in the glen at ten. For now, across the green, I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. Hello to married men I know. I'll soon have a wife and leave yours alone. A bonny wife indeed, and she's all I'll ever need. With bonny cheek, my days will fly, and love her I will till the day I die. That's why across the green, I'll go home with bonny cheek. Go home. And 
I never realize how fortunate we are until I meet someone from the outside. I mean a stranger to Brigadoon. I dinna ken anything about you. But from the little you've said, I've heard everything you think I think differently about. And I'm also quite certain that what I think is far more, well, pleasant. Hey, you don't like me very much, do you? That's the funny part. I like you very much. I just didn't like anything you say. Uh, Fiona. I? If I stuck around the town today, would you take me to the wedding this evening? Oh, why do you suddenly want to go? Oh, why can't I say? <laughs> Fine, I'll take you. And I'll be highly pleased you'll be there. Uh, you will? Why? Well, because of what I just told you. I like <coughs> you very much. Oh, that's right. You did say that, didn't you? Ah, now I'll show you a place where you can lie down and rest. Oh, what are you going to do? Uh, gather some heather for the wedding. Oh, where do you do that? On the hill, where the heather is. Oh, well, may I go with you? No, I'll do it much faster by myself. I won't bother you, really. Maybe I'm the one who's slightly nutty, but... Can't we two go walking together Out beyond the valley of trees Out where there's a hillside of heather Curtsying gently in the breeze That's what I'd like to do See the heather, but with you. The mist of May is in the gloaming, and all the clouds are